for God's sake, how much more carnage are we willing to accept? How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough? We spent hours with hundreds of family members who were broken, and whose lives will never be the same. They had one message for all of us. Do something. Just do something. For God's sake, do something. That was President Biden ramping up his calls for legislation to reduce gun violence during a primetime address last night. This comes in the wake of a string of mass shootings, including Buffalo, Uvalde, and most recently, Tulsa. Joining us now to discuss, Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. Congressman, good to see you this evening. I think a lot of people Thanks agree uh, with President Biden's messaging that something needs to be done. The question is, what do you do? He wants legislation that would ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. He wants to raise the age to purchase a weapon from 18 to 21. He wants to limit how many rounds a weapon can hold. He wants to expand background checks. He wants Congress to pass these measures and tighten up gun control in this country. Other people would say, if you do that, you start to strip away and chip away at the Second Amendment rights of the people of this country, and that even still, um, people who have, you know, mental illness or whatever the case may be, they will find a way to harm people if they want to, a way that doesn't necessarily involve guns. What say you? I believe you're exactly right. We're, we're trying to treat the um, the symptoms and not the cause. The cause is obviously mental health. You take away the guns. I mean, look at Timothy McVeigh at Oklahoma City, the bombing. Over Well over 100 folks lost their lives. And what did he use? Ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel. I think if someone, you know, my father fought in the Second World War in the Pacific. He was in the Marine Corps. And he fought the Japanese. And he told me, he said, he said, buddy, he said, if somebody is willing to lose their life to take you out, there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. And that's that's really where we're at in this society today. But we've got to address the mental health issue, um, continue to, to, to penalize law abiding citizens to me is a, is a, is the wrong course. And I, it's, you know, the president took an he took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Yeah. And the Constitution is very clear in that regard, in my it, opinion. It's addressing mental health. It's also addressing the breakdown in community. You know, where was the safety net for the shooter in Uvalde? Obviously, he had a breakdown at home. You know, family wasn't a strong support system for him. But the community didn't recognize it either. And he put out so many, so many warning signs um, that people could have, you know, could have caught on to. Um, and perhaps, you know, possibly helped him. But having said that, uh, you know, a lot of people have different ideas on what we could do here. And Congressman, your colleague, Thomas uh, Massey, said this. I want to take a listen. They're not serious about ending school shootings because none of their solutions would work. If they really were serious, they would quit advertising our kids as being in gun-free zones. The schools that have gotten away from advertising that, the schools that have posted signs that said our staff is armed and they're willing to use force to stop somebody from hurting our kids, those schools have never seen a mass public. So, Congressman, I've actually been sort of holding back from saying that, but I've been thinking that over the last, you know, um, several weeks since we've been watching this play out within our society. If you had schools that locked doors and had armed guards there, essentially putting out the message to people, if you walk up to this school with any kind of firearm, deadly force will be used on you, no <clears throat> questions asked. I'm pretty sure it would reduce the number of school shootings that we have in this country. Absolutely. When I was mayor of Knox County in Tennessee, uh, you know, we bit the bullet. We did that. We have secure facilities. We have um, you, to get you got to buzz to get in, and once you get in, you're in a secure area, and then you have to buzz to get into the into the area, into the office, and then they have and they can either turn you away or let you in. And so um, that's the kind of thing. You know, we spent forty billion unchecked dollars basically to Ukraine, and um, a country in Europe where most people probably couldn't find it on the map. Um, months ago, and and we 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 should be able to find the money to do this. We yeah. should provide block grants and and allow and allow communities to opt in if they want to, and and look at what's worked in communities and what hasn't worked in communities. Currently, what we're doing obviously isn't working, doing nothing, but uh, in communities where it has worked, as in where I come from, uh, it, it works very well. Yeah, and I've been thinking about the money that was spent during the pandemic as well to try to make schools safer while students weren't even in school and they were remote learning and distance learning. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but the millions of taxpayer dollars that went to, you know, re-outfitting these schools and fixing filtration systems. And now we've moved beyond this pandemic. Some of those funds could have been used to help shore up the safety of our schools. 
Absolutely. If, if some of those funds were used, uh, I know Speaker Pelosi made sure that plenty of money was in there for the Kennedy Performing Arts Center and some of those other groups that that um, don't tend to support uh, traditional values, I should say. And they uh, they continued to fund them through that through the epidemic. And yet um, other other groups went without. That would be clearly something that could be done. I mean, we could find the money for that if we clearly wanted to do something. We right. could. But it, it, it's, it doesn't fit their narrative. It doesn't fit their objectives. And their objectives, of course, is staying in power, not providing safe, safe school grounds for children. That's really sad, actually, when you think about what you just said. That is really sad. Um, Congressman, good to see you tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you, ma'am.